Hi, I'm back in the cider shed um, for part two of the cheese and cider tasting. Um, so you, in the last video I tried Go With Kefili that was sent to me very kindly by the Trithowans. And also in the box was a piece of cheddar, a pitchfork cheddar, which is a new cloth bound cheddar that they started making relatively in the last two, three years. Um, so it ticks all the boxes of a, a traditional cheddar. It's, cheddar is a much maligned product in many ways. Um, basically, almost every country in the world has a factory turning out something called cheddar. Uh, cheddar, cheddaring is um, a style. It's a place. Where well, it's a cheese, it's a place, and it's it's a method by which you make cheddar. Cheddaring. Um, except they don't even do that in the United States and certain places anymore. They just stir the curds anyway. That's a technical technicality. Let's not get into it. Um, so yeah, so it's very hard to protect because the horse is very much bolted in terms of protecting the term cheddar. Uh, because if you cheddar in England, Australia, Ta Kathmandu, it's very hard to argue that the thing you have made is a cheddar. Okay, but there are some protections. There's a PDO, which is a little bit mm, loose. Basically, I think something like uh, only 10% of it has to be uncovered. I.e., 90% of it can be mechanised. Uh, it can be vacuum packed, vegetarian rennet, standardised milk, pasteurised milk, all that sort of stuff. Um, so there's only a few people making uh, traditional cheddar, which is something that would be in raw milk, old fashioned starter cultures. I'm not going to get into that too much, maybe at a later date. Um, uh, cloth bound, so that's a very traditional British thing actually, cloth binding. We manufactured a lot of cloth in Britain, so probably explains one of the reasons why we used it. Um, also sealed in, usually in lard. Um, pigs and dairy are actually quite closely related in many ways, which a lot of people wouldn't know because pigs love to drink whey. And whey is the liquid part that comes off cheddar making, or ch cheese making in general in fact. So if you have, if you have lots of whey, rather than throw it away or you know, whatever, you feed it to pigs, pigs get fat and happy, you eat the pigs, you get fat and happy. Uh, and so it goes on. So most dairies would have had like pigs as well to, for that very reason. So lard is something that had been available. You need to smear on the cloth to help uh, seal it more. But it's not as hermetically sealed as it would be as with uh, plastic vacuum packing. So what that means is you, 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 you're binding it to stop air penetration because that's what activates the blue moulds, which is fine. The blue mould is fine, but once you get blue in there, it starts to break the cheese down. It shortens its shelf life and also some people don't want too much blue. Um, but also allows some moisture to leave the cheese, which means what happens is it concentrates the paste. Uh, like in whiskey, what's called the an angel's share or the angel's portion, what evaporates off into the atmosphere, so it concentrates what's left inside. Uh, commercially, on a large scale, you wouldn't want that to happen because cheese is sold by weight, so it's losing moisture, it's getting lighter, therefore that's pounds sterling evaporating into the atmosphere, which is a bad thing. But for ch traditional ch uh, cheddar makers or cheese makers, it means you get, you, you're concentrating the paste, which gives you more flavour. Blah, blah, blah. So that's a little bit about cheddar. Um, I'm going to try it with the cider. Let's get the cheddar out first though, shall we? So, back to my box. So I actually left the box in the shed overnight. Because uh, it's a good temperature in here uh, for cheese. Cheese doesn't have to be in the refrigerator. People made cheese because they didn't have refrigerators. So that's what they did. They made cheese because they didn't have refrigerators and it was worth preserving milk. So it doesn't have to be kept in the refrigerator at all. Um, it'll just come on faster at high temperatures, particularly soft cheeses or blue cheeses will break down a lot faster. Uh, you know, so cool is what you want if you're maturing it. Uh, so around about 10 Celsius, 10 Celsius-ish. Um, that will, um, yeah, it's about right for maturing sort of the star cheese, high cheese. So there you go, pitchfork cheddar. Nice label uh, with a pitchfork on it. Quite nice, cool, white on black. I kind of like that kind of minimalist thing. Um, so let's get this mother out. Have a look at it. So this would have been cloth bound. I suspect the cloth's been taken off it. It has indeed. I think it's about a year old this. Uh, nice colour. It's got quite a nice sort of yellow colour. I was talking about the um, Red Leicester the other day about the colouring in it. It's the Anato that give it that red colour. Well this has got a nice natural red colour to it so one suspects these animals have been out on pasture because that's where you get your beta keratin in the milk to give you that, that colour. Uh, not always the case, you can get coloured, you know, good colouring milk that's made in the winter, but it tends to be paler, you know. Um, well, I can smell it. it. Smells great. Got real deep, rich, creamy, 
butter, lactic, grassy mineral smell to it. So it's, it's almost sweet, like like uh, like junket, like um, uh, yeah, junket. Like like if you've ever um, smelt fresh curd, it's got a sweetness to it. It's got the lactose in it. This has got that sort of sort of sweet lac lactose twang to it. Let's put that down here. Um, and let's grab some cider. Now I didn't know what cider to get. Still not sure. You know what? I'm going to go for the Yarlington Mill. So it's it's a little bit similar to the Norman we had uh, in the last tasting, but it's not quite. Uh, it's a little bit richer, I would say. But the reason I'm going to go for it is because of an association with another very famous cheddar. So Pitchfork cheddar is very much made in the same style as cheeses like Montgomery's cheddar. One of the most famous traditional cheddars, most traditional cheddars in the world. Um, and this cider is called, is made from an apple varietal called Yarlington Mill. So again, Guatkins. So again, it's going to have a little bit of that acidity that we had in the Norman. I think it's a bit less acid, but it's still going to have that. Um, the interesting thing about Yarlington Mill is it's in a village called Yarlington. And Yarlington is the neighbouring village to a village called North Cadbury. Now, the most famous um, export from North Cadbury, Montgomery's cheddar. So the apple varietal that was discovered growing from a tree out of the side of the mill in, in Yarlington is, uh, is basically the antecedent to the apple the apples that went into this. So the thing about apples is, very quickly, is if you take an apple from a tree, take the seeds out of it, plant it, you will not get the tree growing that you took it from, if you see what I mean. So if you took a Cox's apple and took all the seeds out of it, put them in the ground, you wouldn't then get trees of Cox's apples growing. You get 20, about 20 seeds in an apple. You get like 20 totally different trees. Okay. So that's pretty amazing. But that means if you want to grow the same tree, what you have to do is take a graft off a tree and graft that onto some other rootstock. That's the only way you can get another apple tree to grow, basically. Uh, they're all cultivars, effectively. Um, so if you have a Granny Smith, that at some point, that's a cutting from a cutting from a cutting from a cutting that came off the original tree in North Sydney in Australia. Okay, interesting fact about apples. When I found that out, it was pretty gobsmacked. Interesting, huh? So yeah, so most uh, apple trees, if you will be, if you getting sort of specific, specific apples, will be grafted onto rootstock and grown that way. So actually, that means you can get one tree with a hundred different varieties growing off it, because you can graft lots of different varieties onto one, onto one rootstock if you like. And some people do that. So you get one tree but with lots of different things, and you can blend them all together. Cool, huh? Anyway, Yarlington Mill. Uh, this is. I would say it's actually quite amber this but it's very hazy so um yes yeah, so it's hard to say so it's obviously not a clean amber, but it's a definite amber color less gold i would say it's certainly more amber um still cider unfiltered can't see a thing through that yep yeah. amber and turbid i would call that let's give it a sniff uh, sniff <coughs> sniff actually lift my glasses up again so again i'm, I'm kind of left nostriled so I sniff with my left nostril because I can smell more out of it. You should try it. So it's weird. I didn't know. I didn't notice for a long time, but yeah, left nostril. There you go. So this is again rich apple, more richer than the Norman cider that we smell. Less acidity on the nose. Still a hint of it. Much more of a like a buttery, porched, sweet apple thing on the nose. Almost like a dairy kind of thing. Like, like apples with cream on, poached apples in brown sugar with cream or something like that. That's the sort of thing I'm maybe drool a bit that. Um, that's what I'm getting. Um, yeah, interesting. Let's give it a, uh, a test. Mm. So this is pretty sweet for a medium. First thing I get the soft tannins, so they're the tannins that make your mouth squeaky. The hard tannins are what give you bitterness. Um, so yeah, quite gentle though, but it's definitely there. Um, obvious ripe apple, little bit of lactic, lemony acidity on the back. Yeah, it's just starting to make my mouth water. Now this is richer and sweeter, so it's not quite as imbalanced as the Norman cider was. It's still good, it's very more dessert like this, bigger, richer. It is like a apple pie with the wet um, baked sugared pastry on it if you know what I mean you know what I mean? You've, when it's been steamed by the fruit inside you get the kind of wet sort of amazing stodgy crust 
with the sugar on. I love that. Yeah, it's, it's, I'm getting a bit of that. So before we try the um, cheddar, one more aside, I promise, last aside. Um, let's talk about slurping. So we've talked a bit about tasting before. You look at it, smell it, taste it. The tasting is more than just going glug, swallow. Ooh, that's nice. I mean, you're welcome to do that. But if you're probably thinking about something, when you get the most out of it, then you want to get oxygen uh, over it, over the be over the beverage when it's in your mouth. Get it all around your mouth, swallow it, get up the back of your nose. That's where to properly taste something. Um, I know it makes you look like a git <laughs> when you do it, and I do it all the time now in public. I forget I'm doing it. I mean, whatever, whether it's water or coffee or wine or beer or cider or whatever. But it does work. I mean, it does work. So it's just a habit I've got into. So. Do that. It gets it all around your mouth. You taste it a lot more. It does make a difference. I promise you. It's not just a gimmick. I've seen some people do it way too loud and way too aggressively. So it's actually quite embarrassing. I try and do it a little bit subtly. But it's only so subtle. There's only so much subtlety you can give to slurping on a cider. Anyway. Let's try some of this cheddar. Weapon of choice. Cheese of choice. Yeah, pretty looking thing. Um, in fact, you can see it's darker at the edges than it is in the middle because that's where it's lost. I was talking about moisture loss. It's lost moisture at the edge, so it's darker because it's more concentrated there. So it's a prime example of what I was talking about. So let's cut a bit off this thing. So 12 months, quite young. I mean, you can take these cheese and it's quite got quite a lot of uh, moisture in it, which is a relatively, relatively new venture, and they're sitting on a lot of cheese. You've got to start selling it as soon as you can to get a return on your money, but you don't want to sell it too young because you want to have flavour development. So it's kind of like a balance, I guess, but I'm sure they'll be trying to take these up to an older age profile as as, you know, as time goes by. Um, oh, so again, that, it's got that smell again. It smells like like curds, sweet lactic curd in a vat is what it smells like to me. Mixed with butter, maybe like a hint of clotted cream as well, something like that. It smells good. So this is our... Mm. So more acid than the um, Leicester we tried a couple of films ago. Bear with me. It's nice because you've got that good acidity in this because of the sweetness in that. Again, as we discussed in the video where we had the uh, the Leicester and the Jura, the, the Gruyere, um, the Leicester was delicious, but it didn't have quite the bite of that, and the and the um, and so it didn't quite stand up to the to the to the to the boldness of the cider. That cider was more acid than this, but this is sweet. And I think again the. I might go for this again, just to try it against that, because I think the acidity of this will actually balance brilliantly with that, whereas it didn't because it, with the Leicester because it wasn't acid enough, an acid enough cheese. This is a good, I mean, this is a good pairing. It's really good. It's sweet and sour, can't go wrong. Like I said, Christmas put, uh, Christmas cake and uh, Wednesday ale, it's that kind of thing. Eccles cake and Lancashire, that kind of thing. Can't really go wrong. Sweet stuff with cheese, because cheese has got salt and sourness, tends to work. Nine times out of ten. Very rich side of that. It's almost like a dessert. It's delicious to drink, but you probably wouldn't want to have pint after pint after pint of it. But that's all right, you don't have to. Let's have a go with this. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, totally for one. Well. It's amazing doing them back to back. This smells so much more acid, laser like in terms of its its focus, its apple focus, it's yeah. Amazing, so a skins, apple, fresh apple, you know, it's just been cut. Um, yeah, let me get a bit more cheese out with this. I think this is going to work really well, to be honest with you. But cheddar and cider is the classic combo, because Somerset is a home of cheddar. It's the home of, it's one of the spiritual homes of Somerset and Herefordshire, the two places that are most thought of as the spiritual homes of cider in this country. Nice acid, really clean. Mm. 
So it's quite a mineral quality to this. Hint of sweetness to it, a hint of that lactic um, butteriness in there. But it's got quite a mouth-watering acidity. But it's not a dry chair, it's got loads of moisture in it. You could certainly age this out a bit, see where it would go. One more go, I swear God. It must be very boring or just annoying watching somebody <laughs> eat, great, eat great cheese and drink cider when you, when you don't have it available to you. Okay. I have to say again, I feel like the acidity in this is just a bit punchy. They're going for something which is the opposite, so not so acid and sweet like the Alpine cheese works better for this. Um, so actually I'd go for the Arlington or even the Norman with that, that sweet and sour thing. I think that's what works the best. What are we up to? God, about over 15 minutes of me prattling on. Well, guys, um, I hope you stuck through all that. If you didn't, uh, well, you can't hear me saying this, but um, I don't blame you for leaving because that's a lot of talking and watching somebody eat cheese. Anyway, um, Pitchfork, good stuff, good stuff. Those guys are doing a good job and to have been only been making it for such a small amount of time. To get that good that quick shows real skill. It's not the easiest thing in the, do, in the world to do is to make something like a great cheddar straight out of the box. You know, it takes, take, can take years often to get there. So, yeah, I think years of making go with Kefili have given them real cheese making knowledge and respect for the product and it shows in what they're doing. Anyway, enough of me. Um, I'm going to finish this, uh, make a dent, a bigger dent than I already have in that pitchfork, and I'll be back again soon. So, thank you for watching and cheers.